I'm having trouble hearing you, Mr. Stock. Can you play a little louder, please? <laughs> oh, I'll just do a solo, Mr. Stock. Don't worry about it. I think of it, I can never follow you anyway, so <laughs> just play as softly as you like. <laughs> I'm gonna do my own thing here. Alright, that's enough. You can is start. That it? Is, it, is it time to start? Oh, see, I can't see anymore. It might as well explain to the folks at home that the TV has now moved down to the floor because. Mr. Stock likes it that way, because that way, he's the only one that can see it. But it's just as well, because I've noticed in past shows that I always am looking at the monitor all the time. It looks terrible, so it's fine. That's you just have to let me it. know. You just have to let me know, Mr. Stock, when it's time to announce you. It's time to announce me, oh. Mr. Poe. <laughs> well, once again, it is my superb, supreme, abject, all those things I usually say, pleasure to introduce South Florida's Mr. Folk, Michael Stock. Thank you, and welcome again to New Traditions. Uh, my co-host, Edgar Allan Poe IV, you have to excuse him. His mother's in the studio today, and he's, I guess, trying to impress her or something. Well, she's not really in the studio now. She's supposed to be getting us coffee, but as usual, you can't just, I can never count on no, her. No, good health is I hard asked for to coffee find. when I got here, what, a half an hour ago. I'm still waiting for her. I don't know. Maybe she got lost well, or something. Well, Mr. Poe, you already she's did your introduction. Mm. I think that's enough, please. Uh, uh, and uh, welcome to New Where Traditions, and uh, this show we... Uh, well, oh, oh, there your, it is. Here's your coffee, uh, Mr. Oh, thanks, Mom. It's about time. <coughs> <laughs> she has your style. No, she was wearing a cask because of the... No, we, we don't care. Can we see that on the monitor? <laughs> no, we don't care I have about a joke that. about it if we could see it, but... Uh, <laughs> we can Never start mind. the show. You want to take? You want give me another introduction, Mr. Poe? I think we kind of missed Once the Once again, Miss, <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce South Florida's Mr. Folk, Michael Stock. And welcome to New Traditions. Uh, this program, where aren't you going to introduce me again, Mr. Stock? No, it's only doesn't... fair, isn't it? Come uh, on, introduce you twice. The Edgar Allan Poe the Fourth, leader you. of mm. the uh, New Traditions Orchestra and co-host, uh, whose job solely it is basically to introduce me, but uh, he's trying to revamp Coffee's that cold, all the Mom. time. And when he's welcome to New Traditions, this is a show we're on every week at this time. We are broadcast here. From the Anna Brenner Myers Telecommunication here, uh, right outside downtown Miami at the WLRN studios. <coughs> and what we do is uh, present talented people who live here in South Florida in a, uh, in a traditional art form type thing. Where, uh, oh I'm and glad I got we, the coffee so I can make it through this introduction. And then we asked them to do something new and original. And uh, so today's guest <coughs> is Darby Hayes who's an actress, and I'm sure if people have seen you around town, they wouldn't know it's you anyways, because you're always wearing costumes and, and acting and mm -hmm. so but, and but my face is all white. You're all white, but now you look normal. More yeah, specifically, Mr. Stock, shouldn't we say that she's a mime? Uh, did I say that? I uh, just no, said actress. 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 Yeah. Okay, well, she's a mime. A mime. Well, we'll oh. talk about this that later This is a rare chance to hear her speak. Our listeners are very privileged. Okay, well, listen to hear what Darby sounds like as well. And the other guest uh, is Mark Weiser, who is currently our associate producer here at New Traditions, mm -hmm. and he's also, uh, this is the first time he's a New uh, Traditions associate producer. You'll see his name at the end of the credits at the end of the show. It's quite a coincidence, isn't it, Mr. Stock, that the first time, Mr. S now that Mr. Weiser has taken over as associate producer, he's, he's responsible for getting the guests? Look who we've got as a guest. Uh, I'll be on all the shows. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> Mr. Yes, okay. You know, he purposely, oh, darn, I just couldn't get that it, one extra guest. There used to be <laughs> two guests, but now there's going to be uh, two co-hosts. Hmm. Actually, well, guest. if you really want, Mark is here kind of is batting in for us because we did have uh, a no-show today. Uh, Doug Woodsman, you might, Dave, Doug Woodsman. Doug Woodsman. He, you might Doug. remember him. He was a lousy guitarist who walked off the show a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I He's thought I'd give him, to be on the show again. I'd give him a second <laughs> shot, and what happened? He doesn't show up. So, Doug? That's one that you booked. <laughs> That's what I, I, well, I booked him to try to get, I was trying he to be nice to him. wanted to give him a chance to redeem himself. And what trying. does he do? Doesn't show up. He gives it to us, right up the old, um... But anyway. Yeah. I think we could continue on with the show. Is there anything of importance you'd like to add, uh, kind of like... Maybe to impress your mom while, while the opportunity's here? Uh, maybe a Shakespearean monologue or something? Or? Maybe not. No. <laughs> maybe not? Maybe not. Oh. <laughs> All okay. right, well, let's continue with the show. Our first guest is Darby Hayes. Darby's, uh, I've, ever since I've lived on South Florida, you've been around as well. You, you, yeah. Are you from this area? 
No, not originally. I'm a, I was born and raised in Connecticut, and although um, uh, most of my adult life was spent around the country, mm -hmm. um, I uh, can say I'm from Connecticut originally. But now you call South Florida home. Yes, Florida is my home. A and what is it you do? I'm a mime and character actress. And sort of like um, created a, a word that I call myself characteress. So a mime and characteress, which is a contraction mm. of character actress. Is there a, mm. a, a big demand for characteresses? Well, in, in certain uh, areas, yes, there is. Um, my work has really uh, been focused on um, creating specialized performances for uh, occasions that are geared to specific themes and events. Oh, so you're very events. flexible in what yes. you do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I've done maybe about 75 different characters, both in my man and regular character. And what character are you now? This is the original Darby Hayes. I thought maybe it was a football player with a shoulder pads there. <laughs> I thought she was a well, some offensive lineman. Or? I'm glad I patted myself for this morning's show. I <laughs> think I'm good. needing it. Yeah, Mr. Mm. Well, what I find most fascinating about what you do is that, uh, well, the fact that you, you do what you do. Uh, you've, you've trained under uh, some of the tops in the world in mine, and yes. I'm, I, I'm specifically speaking of Marcel Marceau. Yes. So if you saw Marcel in the street, would he know who you are? Yes, he would, as a matter <laughs> of fact, and we'd probably hug and just greet each other and have a grand old time talking. We spent mm. some really wonderful moments together um, during s summer times uh, between 1984 and 1986 for three summers. and. Um, I saw him when he came to Miami and performed at Gusman Cultural Center downtown and, and chatted with him after the show. So it was really, uh, it's been a real nice uh, friendship that we have, even though it's, it's at a distance. You know, mm -hmm. I write to him every now and then. And Is he I don't know, a role model? Well, he's, I would consider him my, my mentor in a way, um, my hero and my, my, the model that I do use and um, admire and want to aspire towards. Um, I, I guess I really must give uh, the, the majority of the credit for my training and expertise to the Golston School for Mimes, which is located in Ohio at uh, Gambier, which houses a beautiful college called Kenyon College. And every summer, there's a, an intensive institute. And I just came back from there this summer mm -hmm. and spent some time um, working on some of um, techniques and uh, creating my own style, working what I would call advanced mime work for me. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, all, all those students come at all levels there and study. Mm -hmm. And Greg Goldston and Nick Johnson are the uh, two teachers. And one comes from the French tradition, Greg Goldston, out of the, the Marceau classical mime tradition. And the other comes out of the Polish mime. Uh, originated by Thomas Jeffsky, Warsaw Mime Company. And his teacher in New York, who is the second, first generation over Thomas Jeffsky, was Stefan Jodzikowski. And he came to, to uh, teach us uh, for a, uh, a few days out there in Ohio. So I got a little spattering of both. And I've been well, getting that every year for the past eight, seven years. That's great. I, I have no idea who those gentlemen are. I guess so we can't make any jokes about Polish mimes, huh? like the uh, Polish mime was. A restaurant on the street corner for making too much noise or talk, <laughs> talking too loud. Well, I guess we can't make jokes. No. Like no. <laughs> the, uh, Mr. Stock, you said the most interesting thing about what she do, what she does, is that she does it. Is that really the most interesting thing that you well, can I think of? Well, I find that fascinating. It's like yeah. it's, uh, just the, to be able to. I, I guess that's what your life or your career is devoted to is, is performing. Uh, couldn't you think yes. of something more specific? That you that you thought was the most interesting thing about what she Mr. does. No, I'm not the guest here, Mr. Poe. Oh. I asked the question. Oh, oh, Darby's me. the guest, oh, I'm and sorry, uh, you Mr. you, you, Stark, you destroyed the nice me. little segue I had planned here, Mr. Poe. Oh, oh well, let's go back a little bit. Okay. Well, you were talking about the tradition of mime. Yes. And how you've been training in the past eight years. Yes. And what I want to know, well, since the show is called New Traditions, uh, how you've taken this tradition and and customized to your own to your own. Style. Nice. Well, segue, you know, Mike. Thank you, Mr. It's Very been a, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. It's been a, it's <laughs> been a gradual process for me. And um, when I entered the field of theater and movement back in uh, the mid '70s, I um, 
uh, it was launched through the Living Stage in Washington, D.C. They did a lot of movement, a lot of uh, improvisational theater. And in that genre, I really felt comfortable with my body and using that as a vehicle for expression. And it was about, um, well, 1980 when I really became dedicated to the field of mime as an art form. And um, I've been making a living at it. Can and also some, uh, te oh. teaching as well as performing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Teaching it is another way of doing yes. what you're doing. Yes. Right. Uh, is there anything that you could show us in the studio, kind of like, uh, I don't know, what pointers? Is, is what you do, you think, very unique, or can other people do what you do? Or? Well, it is unique, and, yeah, and other people would study and, you know, dedicated time and, and self-discipline and being in the studio, working with their bodies and getting good direction and good, good instruction can also learn that. You know, uh, what I like to say to children, when I do, do school programs in, in the public schools throughout Dade and Broward counties, and even Monroe and Palm Beach, and I say to children, if studying mime is like uh, a dancer studies ballet. You spend many years at the bar exercising and, and, and learning all the steps and all the language there is to making your body work in a ballet way. And to dance on stage may take 10 years before you get out and do a real uh, uh, full show. Mm -hmm. Well, mime takes the same kind of dedication. There's a whole language to it, and there's a whole style to learn. So it takes well, many, yeah. many years of study. I wouldn't know that. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't think that dancing, that mime gets the same respect as dance. I mean, most people don't look at mime. Well, it's not that well known an art form, and it's becoming an autonomous art form. And mimes, like myself around the country, are hoping to educate the people and are doing it to bring appreciation to the art form in that way. Can you do some sort of performance for us or some sort of Well, um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what I focused on this summer. Um, okay. Although a large part of mime is illusion, it's, it's creating uh, something that's there without using any props, you know, like the wall, which is very common and you see uh, performers doing that all the time. Um, or, or maybe a, a glass of water or you might pick a ball up off of a, a shelf and then throw it up and catch it. Now that's called physicalization of objects, okay? What I, with all the language that I have in mind to create illusions and doing walks in place and climbing ladders and all that around and in creating an environment without props, what I learned this summer uh, again and began to polish on was the quality of emotion that must go with the technique. The technique is wonderful and that's needed, but it's really where the emotion is that makes an, or, or changes the, the, uh, the quality of that performance. So if I had a box, let's say here, let me, let me just do something, I'll do something to the camera. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it just technically as a mechanical thing and then I'll do it with emotion, okay? For the camera, heck no, do it for us, <laughs> huh, Mr. Stock? <laughs> We're okay. the hosts here. Well, I'll Facebook. No, no, no. no. Okay. Okay. no we <laughs> like to create an environment with props, by the way. I but can I'm see you certainly have in fact them. Um, we like lots of them around. I was Don't thinking of. Oh. Hmm? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this might be something just very mechanical, okay? Now let me do it again, and this time I'll put quality of emotion in it, okay? Okay. You see, there's a real difference. Now on stage, when a mime is performing for a very large audience, where people are 100 to 200 and 300 feet away, I mean, this is you know, very deep, some of the theaters. Have you performed on stages like that? Yes. I've performed for audiences as many as 600. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that kind of depth to reach, the performer has to really uh, suspend the emotion and make it bigger than life and really uh, project it out into 
everywhere, the whole space, so that everyone can feel it and understand what is happening, what's going on. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of work with changing emotions from uh, being depressed totally like, like this and then noticing an object. I'll, I'll use the Gumby as a, as a prop, yeah. since we have so many props here today. <laughs> Not exactly my, my uh, uh, forte, but I'll play with it anyway. So, uh, So what happens is you can come up for a show of a coloration or a decoloration of emotion where you've got one uh, e emotion that's the antithesis of the other or, you know, a juxtaposition. And you can create a real dynamic in the discovery or the, you know, the realization of a new feeling. And it can be through an object, through a person, through an event or an idea. And that's all mimed out. So what makes mind powerful is the emotional quality. Really adds power. What I find interesting is that there's there's the physical act of miming, and then there's like you're explaining the the technical side, which I never knew existed. But what I kind of wonder is like for someone like Mr. Poe, who who doesn't know about the technical side of it, would he oh. appreciate it just <coughs> as much, even though he doesn't really see what you you know the underbelly of it. Speaking of underbelly, here's what it is, and th you might appreciate this, mm. uh, Mr. Poe. Perhaps. Since, since, <laughs> we'll see. since a lot I'll of actors do, don't don't um, have this kind of training, mm -hmm. um, they they may see value in what learning how to use movement in a purposeful way. Uh, in order to create a movement, it must come from an impulse, and the impulse is abdominal. It's through respiration that the impulse is born. And the impulse then generates the movement and carries the motivation of the feeling. So if I were like this, and I look up at the Gumby, there's an impulse here that generates the movement here, and an impulse to pick it up, and then impulse to take it in. And from a distance, that impulse really is read by the audience, clearly and profoundly, especially in silence. Mm -hmm. In regular acting, the voice carries a lot of the weight, so everything is spoken, and so you hear it verbally, and you hear the strength of the voice and all that. So it, without voice, the body needs to uh, really accentuate what, it, what is being felt and psychologically what's going on inside the performer. Well, I have a question. <clears throat> Uh, I was just wondering, as a as a mime and as an actress, mm -hmm. uh, do you find that perhaps as the actress you have to worry about the mime technique creeping into your acting as as second nature, you know, because it's so second nature to you? Do you have to worry about being less believable because of? You, you, you're so steeped in, in mind. This is very good because this issue came up for me not long ago, about six months ago. I was working with a director who wants to uh, create, have me do a, a mime drama, perform in a mime drama. And uh, this, this happened. I was so stylized mm -hmm. that he wanted to have it be more realism mm -hmm. rather than stylization. And it took work for me to get more into the naturalism of the movement rather than stylization. And, um, so it's like easier to be yes, an actress. Yes, because... It's not unusual at all, right. because right. Shakespearean I am actors, it's the same thing, Shakespearean actors, yes. maybe naturalistic things, you can see that Shakespearean training creeping in sometimes. Yeah. And uh, dancers also, mm -hmm. even though dancers, as we all know, are very sensitive people, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you watch them on stage, even though they may have the emotions, you can see just by the way they move that, yeah. uh, that dance that dancing training and it, if, if it doesn't fit the character, it's, it's disconcerting. It's it, ingrained, you know, after yeah. so many years of right. training. Yeah. So it takes conscious effort to really be in a, in a place where you know you're, you're tempering that a little bit. Does that work against you at all? Have you lost jobs in acting because no. of your mind background? No. 
Although, because, because I'm seen as a mime, a lot of times I'm pigeonholed and they don't think I can do anything else. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, oh, she's a mime, so only call her for mime. You don't regret so. that decision to, to do go into mime and then mm -hmm. make that your... No, I don't, because um, I've met, it's a specialty and there's not very many really good mimes out in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like I'm contributing to an art form and its growth and popularity. I have another uh, last question before we get to our other guest. What does your mother say about all this? You know, at first when I started the enter into the entertainment art, because I had a whole career in um, training and development. I, I used to do professional education programs in the healthcare field. So I came from a real left brain kind of modality of, of functioning. And then I went into total right brain, intuitive, creative part of myself. And my, m at first my family and my mom would say, oh, you know, like, when are you going to get a, a job? <laughs> and how are you going to make a living doing that? Yet it didn't take long before when she would visit me to see me in my element, to appreciate the beauty and the real joy that happens for me as a performer as well mm -hmm. as the audience. And she began to uh, trip on that too and have oh, a grand great. time. So she supports me totally now. Super. It's almost mm -hmm. like Mr. Poe. <laughs> I'm just wait, I'm waiting for my mom to come to that uh, <laughs> same sort of... Uh, <laughs> oh, there she no. is. Oh, she was on camera. <laughs> you look very well on TV. It obviously runs in the family. To tell you the uh, truth, though, my first <laughs> exposure to mime, Mr. Stock was in a college class that my mom was taking. She's a mime herself. Mom, would you like to come out and demonstrate a little no, bit? I can do nothing but the walk. <laughs> she can do the walk? Well, come on, let's see it. Walk on out here. <laughs> She's I didn't see much mime training when you were walking out here with a coffee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, Darby, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, we'll get to you again uh, before the show, end of the show if we run out of things to do. So uh, just, just sit tight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know how much what we're going to say to Mr. Uh, Wise. That's right. Well, I mean, Mark, he, he forced his way on the show. Mark was uh, the producer. Well, you say He's that. in charge of booking the guests, and here he is. So we're stuck I'm on the next him. show, too, <laughs> and the one after that. Mark will always be there in the background. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, well, yeah. actually, you were on one of our first shows. Uh, oh, con you know, by as the way. As the blues guru. As the blues guru, and he is. But... Yeah. Uh, one of our first shows of New Traditions, which I don't know if it'll be repeated because we kind of like on an extended schedule now because, because there are so many talented people in South Florida, it's just har hard to get to all of them. Oh, which reminds me. Well, if it's not going to be repeated, Mr. Stock, why don't we just ask him all the same No, questions. no, I have something more important. Our T-shirts. you're right. He was a lousy interview in the first place. Yeah, he was. He was pretty bad. But also, we had some comments. People thought we were being mean to you just because you weren't answering the questions. <laughs> that was very frustrating. I refuse to cooperate. <laughs> but uh, before we do that, Mr. Poe, we forgot our T-shirt. Oh, segment. well, uh, all right. And what we do every week is, uh, since we are broadcast here locally, we try to feature T-shirts that are made here locally concerning local events and such. And uh, I have to go, this, this shirt is a repeat. I'm sorry to say, I ask, I ask you all, you nice folks out there in cable land and TV land who are watching the show to send in your T-shirt. And uh, no one has sent it in, so I have to go back to my drawer and wear T-shirts I've worn before. And this is a nice little Latin music club on Miami Beach, and I have no idea what that means. Well, wait, please leave the camera. Oh, no, no, oh. Mr. Stark, please. Oh. No, no. Can you see that? Oh. Okay, that's a, a Jose Marti quote. I have no idea what that says either, but... But it, it puts me in good with all the Spanish-speaking people. It's not well, yeah, Jose Martí, isn't that a rum or something? No, he's, no. he's, no, a, know, he's a poet. I know, I know, I know. And, okay. and uh, Mr. Poe, what is your shirt? Say? Well, my shirt is, uh, it says Anastasia, and it's the Greater Miami uh, uh, and the Beaches. Know. Maybe you have to sto scoop up a little bit oh. now, Mr. Poe, because mm -hmm. there's... Okay, okay there that's good. See, this is from the uh, New World Festival of the Arts. Remember that? Way back when? I bet you remember it. I, you, I bet our guests remember it, if you don't, Mr. Stock, because they're probably a little more up on these things. <laughs> well, that's a very and, uh, nice shirt. I'm doing a play now, actually, that's called The Anastasia File, as we speak. It might be over by the time the show airs. I really don't know. Who cares? I never know when these shows air, but it's called The Anastasia File at the New Theater. But it's, no, it's nothing to do with this play or, in fact, the, the, or another play that was written earlier, which the movie Anastasia is based okay, on. Okay, I think that's enough, Mr. Poe. Thank you for your shirt. And if we need your shirts, too, so if you could send in the address. Oh, there it is. And we... Right. Okay, so there's the address of uh, where yeah. my T-shirt. You can just send your T-shirts to that mm -hmm. address, and we'll wear them on TV, and and uh, that'll that'll. Uh, <laughs> I have plenty of T-shirts, Mr. Stein. Okay, you, like you, you can't up now. That's the address. Okay, this T-shirt thing was your idea, and then you, you and then you don't have the shirts to back it up. Well, I need shirts, Gee, folks. I, I I give you the nice. I need the size large and send to that address, and uh, I'll wear them on TV and. Uh, 
what else can you want from that back? Okay, and let's get back to Mark Weiser. Yeah, here. heck with Mark Weiser. Darby was kind of an interesting guest. <laughs> Darby was interesting. No, the last time I was on, after I uh, after I was off for a couple of days, uh, I should say during the few days that followed my last appearance. Yes. I was surprised how many folks c came up and said, "I saw you on uh, New Traditions." Cable no, Cable. you're kidding. Uh, Gosh, uh, you know, and the program why had just it, why was just it a begun, and <laughs> well, I didn't realize how many people were. Flipping through their channels <laughs> yeah. with their remote controls our, our and suddenly uh, on our faithful watchers. That's the way. Well, now now everybody knows why you're our associate producer because you really know how to butter us up. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked so far. Yeah, right, so very yeah. good. And Mark yeah. also. I mean, I, I should say, well, Mark is not producing, hel helping producing the show. He also books a lot of blues music. He's the premier blues impresario. In fact, I'm surrounded by impresarios here. I've got the premier. Folk impresario here on my left. Thank you, Mr. Premier Pope. Blues impresario on my right, and I would assume the Premier Mime impresario, since sure, you're actually the sure. only mime I know of in Miami. <laughs> and well, and me? Cornered. Yeah, what well, are you? Just a bum actor. <laughs> Dime a dozen, I'd say. Oh, well. well, Alan, you know what they say about famous movie stars? What do they say? They were all stars? once bum actors. <laughs> Okay, well, that does it for our That's show. That's it. Okay, thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Okay, well, no, we can talk a little bit more. Let me just give uh, our closing, uh, to, our little uh, closing thank you for everyone for tuning in. And don't forget to let Mark know that you saw him again on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I love hearing that. <laughs> and we're here every week at the same time, Mondays at... Uh, 2.30, right? Mondays at 2.30. 2.30. Tuesdays at 10.30. Tuesdays at 10.30. In the morning. And Thursday evenings at uh, 10 o'clock at night. I'll yeah. get that. Thursday yeah, evenings yeah, yeah. at 10 on this cable channel. And we need your T-shirts and also uh, suggestions and clothes and whatever. All right. Well, let's get Mr. back to Mr. Mr. Weiser. Mr. Stark. Mm. I did have something I wanted to say. And, and, uh, when I was introduced, we I noticed to keep on the, the monitor short, Mark, said, we know you're going to be back here now that you're booking the guest. Associate guests. producer. Yeah. And uh, in that new capacity, I just want to say that I think that the... Uh, a lot of entertainment in Miami, and I know you only gave me this job because you yourself ran out of <laughs> <laughs> entertainers that you personally knew and could drum up from lifting under stones and things and like I'd that. And I'd run out of guests, and uh, you know, pretty desperate. And I gave you half your guests that you had before I was the associate producer anyway, so I'm, I'm glad I'm finally being recognized here. That's right. Well, you're not uh, saying that you're going to run out of people, too. We'll have to get another There's a little perk for you, We may. We may. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you. Uh, All right, well, our uh, next guest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was noticing? What is it you wanted to say, Mark? Wait, wait. Yes, uh, did you oh, have a did point you to make? That's what I wanted to say. That's the point. Mr. That's it? That's I do it? want to say that uh, we, do, we used to have a closing theme song. We used to pick up our banjo and play it. But we're not going to do that anymore because we've had some complaints yeah, to yeah. our orchestra here. So we're just going to talk Justly. over talk over the, the credits. Uh, I don't know whenever they start rolling. Oh, mm. see, okay, there they there are. There we are. There and we well, are. Yeah, I noticed well, the other day, I happened to be home my day off. Darby here. Why don't, we, why don't we have some champagne while we're doing that? There okay? we go. Great oh, idea. Yeah. There we I'll, are. Just, I'll stick to my yeah. beer. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks. We're not mime, so we have to use real props if it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mmm, delicious. Oh, yeah. mm. well, Mr. Poe, Mr. Poe, yes. there's your new uh, title. Under secretary, does it? What does that mean? Well, I, I had to give you that. something. I had to give you something. Oh, know, to life and success, oh. music and mind. Mm. And folk and frivolity. Here, here. Folk, here, not much here. folk on this show. Here, here, here. 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 That's and pitifully little Clink. frivolity, Clink. for that matter. There we Clink. go. And you could have the Clink. fun too. Join in at home.